Thank you. Good morning. All right, let's talk about surgeons now. All right. These are my disclosures. Uh, I do uh, receive salary support from Blue Cross um, for participating in the Michigan Bariatric Surgery Collaborative, which I'll reference today. So as we've heard, gastroesophageal reflux um, can worsen after sleeve gastrectomy, but the severity of these symptoms uh, and, uh, can vary, and it's unknown how much they vary. And the impact of surgeon's uh, technique on these symptoms is also unknown. Um, so we pose the question of, do some surgeons actually have higher rates of severe worsening uh, reflux symptoms after sleeve gastrectomy? So uh, we use data from the Michigan Bariatric Surgery Collaborative, which is uh, a payer-funded consortium of uh, bariatric surgery programs in the state of Michigan. And uh, this uh, data registry that comes from this uh, collaborative includes a variety of uh, perioperative uh, information on patient, uh, as well as surgeon characteristics, 30-day outcomes, and one-year patient-reported outcomes. So within this data registry, we identified patients who underwent a primary laparoscopic sleeve gastrectomy who filled out a GERD HRQL uh, survey, both at baseline and at one year. And for the surgeon analysis, we identified uh, surgeons who performed at least 25 sleeve gastrectomies per year during the study period between um, 2013 and 2017. Um, so uh, as we saw already, the GERD HRQL is um, a validated uh, survey of 10 questions with uh, 0 to 5 Likert scale with 0 uh, uh, of being no symptoms and 5 being the worst symptoms. So your max score can be 50. Um, so we identified everybody who underwent a laparoscopic sleeve gastrectomy who had a worsening symptoms. So their score increased from baseline to one year. And we found that 31% or about a third of the patients had worsening uh, symptoms at one year. And as you can see, the increase in their score actually varied. And we broke it down into tercials of, of mild, moderate, and severe. So mild had a 1.4 uh, increase at one year and severe had 13.8. So then we wanted to figure out, uh, amongst the surgeons, is there a different rate in the uh, amount of patients that had mild, moderate, and severe worsening of scores? So here it is. Um, at the bottom there along the x-axis are all the surgeons in the study, so 52 surgeons. And you can see the distribution of severe symptoms at one year amongst these surgeons. So blue is uh, severe, green is moderate, uh, yellow is mild. And basically you can break down uh, this group of surgeons into tercials as, uh, as well. And uh, there is a group of surgeons who nearly, you know, half, 45 percent of their patients uh, who have worsening symptoms are actually severe worsening of symptoms. And we have a group surgeons where they have a much lower rate of severe worsening symptoms. So basically, the next few slides are comparing the highest rate versus the lowest rate. Um, and we started with the surgeon characteristics. Are these surgeons any different in terms of their, um, their experience and their, uh, their operative outcomes? Uh, and we found that they're quite similar, actually, both in uh, age, years in bariatrics, uh, fellowship training, uh, sleeve uh, annual volume, the total bariatric uh, annual volume, as well as their operative time. And interestingly, as well, in terms of the rate of concurrent hiatal hernia repairs within these two groups is similar as well, which is about a third for each group. Uh, we also looked at their patient outcomes. Did one group have more complications or, uh, than the other? And actually, they were quite similar in terms of overall complications and surgical complications, post-op endoscopy uh, as well. And in terms of uh, weight loss, total body weight loss or excess body weight loss, either way uh, you slice it, was actually fairly similar uh, clinically, but they were statistically uh, significant with um, uh, more weight loss in the group of patients that had higher um, severe worsening of symptoms, which I thought was interesting. Um, if you look at the patient characteristics among these two groups, so surgeons with the highest rate uh, of severe uh, reflux symptoms tended to operate on more patients with diabetes, hypertension, and cardiovascular disease, where the ones with the lowest rate of severe symptoms uh, tended to be more male, white, hyperlipidemia, and have sleep apnea. It's hard to know how much of these influence actual reflux symptoms, but if you look at age, preoperative BMI, peptic ulcer disease, preoperative actual diagnosis of reflux or antacid use, or the number of patients who actually started with a baseline score of zero, so they had de novo or new onset of severe worsening uh, symptoms, um, was actually fairly similar between the two groups. 
Um, so we found that about a third of uh, patients undergoing sleeve gastrectomy within this data registry uh, developed worsened symptoms uh, after sleeve gastrectomy. And the severity of these symptoms actually varied uh, considerably from 1 to 13.8 increase in their score. And the surgeons themselves, the rates of the severe worsening uh, symptoms uh, varied. Um, uh, despite the surgeon's experience and rate of hiatal hernia repairs being similar between uh, two groups. Um, so a couple things to consider uh, when we looked at, you know, preoperative diagnosis of GERD, as we heard today, that, that making that diagnosis um, can, um, can vary. It's not quite standardized. We used, uh, from the data registry, uh, specific data definitions as to, um, you know, mining the, the chart itself, whether they had a diagnosis of GERD or were on PPIs. But even in that uh, setting, uh, PPI and antacid uh, management after surgery and before surgery could vary considerably. And uh, operative technique and surgical skill amongst the surgeons could vary as well. And these are all topics for um, uh, future research. So I appreciate everybody's attention. I also wanted to acknowledge all the participating hospitals in this collaborative who uh, provide us with this data. Thanks.